So someone sent me a video, a Jordan Peterson video. <laughs> nah, because we've been dealing with Andrew the last however many, I've forgotten about old Jordan Peterson. And there was a minute when I used to say that like, them men are like the opposite of each other. There was even a meme where it's like, ah, oh, insecure, like teenage man, like, which path are you going to take? <laughs> it's like, he is like the beta male of that space. Like, I mean, he wouldn't say it. I think this video I'm about to play, he talks about calling out someone else beta males, but he's like, I mean, he talks about like being a man and all of that. This guy is so soft, like, so frail. He's like, he looks like he's going to die. You know what I'm saying? But um, what this video is about, it just might be funny because he's a proper op to me, but I've just got a slight feeling that I might actually agree with it and that would be hilarious if it's because uh, i got a similar theory to this just from the headline yeah let's have a look at it um all right switching over here so jordan peterson on why beta males become movie stars with andrew schultz that's not the andrew i've been talking about and asha akash singh now i watch these guys podcasts sometimes flagrant um they're a bit right wing but sometimes i enjoy it they're not you know they have right wing people, they have left wing people. They, I guess they're a bit Joe Rogan, but maybe not. I've never seen them do anything as crazy. Um, so yeah, they're not they're not gang. Let's put it that way, but I'll give them a chance. Uh, well, let's see how this comes out anyway. When did masculinity become something bad? Never. As I sit here with ripped jeans and my legs crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe when like we what? all, when all us men decided that we would accept that characterization of it, oh, I no. never accepted it. I mean, like, oh, no. I, I was trying to pause that for issues. <laughs> I wanted to respond to what you said there. That's what I'm saying. These men that talk about masculinity, why are the most of them so like, so feminine? And I'm saying, do your thing, bro. Do your thing. Be feminine. It's all good. I don't know. I remember growing up, right? And I think I saw it like play out in movies. Like I remember growing up, and I remember seeing like TV too. TV. It went from my three sons and father knows best to um, dude. Well, to, to what are the, the to every father being a buffoon? Yeah. So I'm, uh. I'm literally watching movies, and I'm like, okay, Bruce Willis is saving the day, right? And then like '90s, Bruce Willis is still saving the day, and then it's 2000s. I'm like. Do we have nobody new here? Is Bruce Willis still the only fucking man left saving the goddamn day? Like, did you, we just ran out of young, uh, I guess, man. All right, already this is not at all what I was uh, talking about because I saw uh, a screenshot of this. I saw one of the actors or something that might come into it later. And my theory, I'm not going to say the whole thing, but my theory about these films is about these romantic comedies, right? These kind of modern romantic comedies, um... I guess they're not modern now, like Adam Sandler, um, Ben Stiller, and then whoever the new versions of all of that rubbish are, yeah. It's a guilty pleasure. I like watching them films. I'm not going to pretend, but I sit in there. I'm watching them with my daughter, actually. Watch a couple of them old films, and I sat there. I was telling her, I was like, you know, these films are all exactly the same, and it's all like a fantasy of like a neaky, nerdy dude who, if you want to say beat him or go for it, um, get in the painting. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, it's not Bruce Willis saving the day. It's like, you know what I'm saying? The proper ner like nerd neek that you bullied at school saving the day. That's kind of what, that's what all these films are. That's why it's like their fantasy of being this alpha male, which is still just complete, like, um, it's it's still misogyny and it's, it's still like uh, just showing the kind of male fragility. Masculine men that were going to be the heroes. And then all of a sudden, like these like Michael Sarah types, he could be a sweet guy, but he's playing like this imp guy you know who's just being like walked around on a leash by his girl in every yeah, movie yeah good got to be good got to be synonymous with harmless uh, I, I yeah but i guess these guys are gonna say them guys are the simps right because they're chasing the girl da, 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 da. but to me it's still the, it's to me it's still the same hero story it's still a drug thing um but you know what's jordan peterson gonna do jordan peterson if you wanted to be a movie star he can't be George, um, bruce willis can he I, I but i don't understand it because i don't think that like i don't think that you can make that a trend. I can't speak on behalf of chicks, but I don't think that you can like make chicks like beta males. I, I don't think that exists, right? Like, don't we like what we like? I, th I mean, maybe uh, an outfit can change. Maybe we like certain jeans and other people like skirts. But at the end of the day, I think there's going to be certain char characteristics of the opposite sex that we're going to be drawn to biologically. Well, you know, the w one of the ones you already discussed is competence. 
anybody with any sense is going to big all right, anytime this man says the word competence yeah my biggest beef with this guy is his use of the word competence big red flag but we'll get to that another time prefer competence unless they want someone who's emasculated and, and is completely powerless and because then they don't have to be afraid of them in some sense i mean they should be more afraid of them really but you know when you confuse competence with power then you punish competence and maybe then you become attracted to weakness because it's not authoritarian it doesn't look like tyranny but it's it's that's only because competence and power are confused in your mind so why is your wife married to you bruv competence and power yeah there's this thing with power yeah that's for sure it's un you know there's this claim that all of our institutions are based on power it's like no they're not only when they're corrupt is that true has anybody that you've studied throughout history managed to obtain a significant amount of power and done the right thing with it nope well i think <laughs> most of our probably not that function reasonably well do do that reasonably well or had you know i mean we're all flawed but there's a huge difference between joseph stalin and franklin roosevelt <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so I mean if you look look at look at the democratic west all things considered. Yeah. The leadership has been okay. Okay to good. Especially compared to absolutely catastrophically horrible with okay to good, you know. This guy. Which is the alternative. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it So when we yeah. we've 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 like obviously this is american politics and all of that but they're like they're what they call left-wing democratic party is more right-wing than the far right over here so i don't know what the hell he's talking about but even this is like to compare over here this is like the man going oh yeah you know boris has done all right we don't give our functional institutions the benefit of the doubt and that doesn't mean they shouldn't be subject to criticism but the idea that they're predicated on arbitrary power uh, and that's their essential nature that's appalling I wasn't being critical of the institutions. I no, no, I know. I oh, know okay. You yeah, I, I'm just curious about like. I'm just curious about like a human's relationship. Well, you have power. a car. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. How often? Um, currently, every time I use it. So, like, if you use it a thousand times, how many times doesn't it work? Uh, zero out of a thousand. A car, right? You said car. Yeah, a car. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that institution is doing pretty well. Yeah, because I'm ninety-nine point nine percent success rate. I'm what has that got to do with a governing body who takes money from you and controls your life and your entire environment? This guy is such a prick. How about flying? Yeah, have you crashed yet when you flew? I mean, I think you did. No, but I was completely overcharged and the entire like, uh, you know gases were pumped into the universe and into the earth um at ridiculous rates um to me <laughs> anyway no uh, I no and, not... and and but uh, yeah so yeah that institution just perfect they're so safe it's just beyond comprehension yeah no i agree with you i'm not uh, i'm not upset at, like institutions in that i'm talking about like a human being that is compelled to power like i understand certain people being compelled to greatness that's really cool you see it in athletes and what's right? the difference what's the difference i think there is as far a difference. As you're concerned i think there is a difference because i think like once somebody accesses power they don't necessarily need to be more great right they'll just do whatever they can to continue to have that power where there are people okay, what do they do this is a good thing to dis differentiate you made this case okay. greatness versus power okay okay let's take it apart okay so you just said there's something arbitrary about power yeah i think th i think there's something i think there's something about people who desire power instead of greatness and i think yeah. that power comes with greatness but if you're if your desire is power, I think there is something dangerous there because you're willing to do whatever it is to maintain that power. Whereas it's the great mimicry of greatness. It's the mimicry of greatness. Oh. Greatness deserves power because you want the powerful to be great. You want the great to, to be, powerful. be powerful. Why wouldn't you? Oh, that's why we exalt these people that we believe are great. We want them to have it. They've earned it. Well, who else would you want to lead you? So is he saying basically that the leaders of the world are great um, all of the people in power are great. If we go back to what he said about competence, he said, he says, this is why I hate his use of that word. I've seen it and say this many times. And as as we go through these um, lives, I'm going to watch loads of his videos until I find the point. Because I've, I've been saying I need to find a specific quote where he said that um, that there isn't any inequality in the world. There's just 
competence-based hierarchy. So he's basically saying that, you know, straight white males are in more power than anyone else because they're more competent. Probably the most white supremacist thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, if they're good at doing something, why wouldn't you put them in the front? Mm. You want to be led with some by someone who isn't great? I mean, you think of all the all the times we spent as tribal hunters. Who do you put in charge? The best hunter. So or then perhaps the best hunter who's also the most generous. Yeah, exactly. You want the guy that's going to share that that. Yeah, uh, right. That but that would make him a great that's hunter, what makes too, him right? Yeah, that would. But does he think that's the society we live in? Of course we don't. Because yes. over time, he would have people in his hunting party. You yes. want great, you want productivity and generosity. So how do we greatness. just, how do we discern between people who are mimicking pow, uh, greatness for power and greatness? Uh, that's a great question. By paying careful attention, by listening and by talking about it. That's mm. the purpose of free speech. That's the purpose of political attention. Mm. Because you want the great, but it can be mimicked by, it's mimicked by psychopaths who yeah. use power. But that doesn't mean that power is the basis of our, of our, hierarchical human relationships that's only the case when they've gone badly wrong hmm. what do you mean by that I mean, you, well when a, when a society is corrupt then the powerful rule when a society isn't corrupt then the great have authority that's not the same thing and, and confusing those you asked why yeah, why yeah. the beta male is now this good. object of attention it's yeah. because we've confused great and powerful and now we're so afraid of power that we're willing to dispense with greatness entirely or even to question whether it exists that's the attack on the meritocracy there's no meritocracy oh there's no greatness and no one who has a position deserves it there's no difference in talent and that doesn't mean our institutions are pure and that everyone with talent is rewarded yes but, but because no institution is pure and no selection method is 100% accurate. But you made this distinction between great, and greatness, power. and power. Yes. So pursue it. Okay. How do you know someone's great as far as you're concerned? When they don't care about power, when they're not obsessed with power, when they're generous, as he said before. But we keep going at that. He, he's got a point, obviously, and I, I guess in everything he's saying that it's... Um, that kind of the confusion of power instead of greatness is, is what's wrong. But when you actually break it down to everything else that he's about and all of the things that he kind of pushes and the ideas of what being great actually is, it's not really great. So I don't really, I, I think he's trying it. How do I know someone is great? I have great admiration for the skill. Okay, you admire them. For the skill. Not yeah, well, that's weird that, see, that's an interesting thing because we have this instinct of admiration. It's mm. like you see someone and you admire them. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, why? You want to be like them. Yeah. That's imitation, right? That's the instinct of imitation. Yeah. And because we can identify what's great because it would be better to be great than the way we are. <laughs> so when yeah. we see it, you think, oh, man, yeah. I really admire that. And maybe you're mad about that because you're so unlike that and it's judgmental and makes you annoyed. Right. But fundamentally, you think, I'd like to be like that. So there's one, admiration. You admire what's great if you have any sense. Yeah. Okay, and that happens spontaneously, especially in a domain that you value. Yes, exactly. The more I value the, domo the, the, the domain, the more, God, I can't speak, the more, um, yeah, the, the more admiration More admiration. I have. And I guess this is how you get your followers and you get all of these weak beta, as they call them, males, um, to follow a man like this. He's very aware. <laughs> If I get these people to admire me, I'm going to get power. Absolutely. I do not admire power. I, I don't even care about people who are powerful if they don't have something that I admire, some sort of skill set that I care about. The only thing that's nice is like the ease of power. You can open up doors easier, you know, but I'm way more impressed by like a powerful person that actually has a skill I didn't even know about like that to me makes me go oh cool that oh, maybe that's why he got there but just holding the position isn't admirable to me in any way at all that's an interesting ending point there from uh andrew schultz so basically he said that um the position of power doesn't interest him from other people but it does interest in him himself because i'm sitting here watching a lot of this thinking you guys are obviously obsessed with power and i'm not saying that everyone in the world isn't on some scale um but they're sitting here having this whole conversation about, um, yeah, what's, you know, the confusion of power and um, greatness when I think that's literally what them are up to. But anyway, uh, interesting clip. Shout out to, um, who sent that to me? 
Let me just remember who sent that to me. Um, yeah, shout out to Ryan, um, Joe Brands. That's my guy, man. That's my guy still. He sends me a lot of stuff. Um, that was interesting. I, it's not at all what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and it wasn't as wild as the uh, Jordan Peterson takes that I like to um, that send me absolutely mental and have me reacting, pausing every... Like, he still drives me nuts because I think he's a prick, 